Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here with uh, Craig DeWitt, who is the head of product at Ripple. Thanks for joining us, Craig. Absolutely, happy to be here. So cross-border payments is really what Ripple's all about, and you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about what is the opportunity? Why is cross-border payments such a, such a uh, pain point for so many parties, especially for the uh, financial institutions? Yeah, one of the big problems with cross-border payments is just cooperation between the different financial institutions. So over time, a concept of messaging between these institutions grew organically. Um, today, that messaging structure is what's called SWIFT. Um, it's how you send a wire payment today. Funny thing is, if you think about where the term wire payment comes from, is it comes from actually sending a telegraph. That's how the banks used to instruct each other to move funds. And that wire, that dee 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 that really still exists today. So you have different files, different formats, mm -hmm. slow process like wire transfers, and there's just a real need for a new infrastructure there in order to bring a better customer experience. Now, when people talk about uh, payments infrastructure in, in the blockchain space, they normally think about you know, Bitcoin, and that was really what uh, the original idea was behind uh, Bitcoin, was to have this kind of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, decentralized uh, you know, payments uh, platform. But I think that was originally devised for a you know, very different uh, use case. Um, how did we get from uh, a permissionless system like, like Bitcoin to something which is, is, is permissioned, like, like Ripple? Yeah, so there's two things that we have. One is the RippleNet, which is an ecosystem that we're building of financial institutions communicating with one another. That has a permission sense to it because banks will do business with other banks that they're comfortable with working with today. The other piece of that that we're building on top of is the XRP ledger. And that, very similar to Bitcoin in some ways, is a permissionless ledger mm -hmm. to where anyone like you and I can run validators and make payments on top of. Right, but so as an ordinary individual, I can you know, become a node in, in the XRP that's right. system, but that, that's, um, does that, does, do we as individuals play any role in this larger kind of cross-border uh, intra-institutional uh, transfer yeah. process? So the way we think about it is XRP Ledger is really this open source, open ledger platform that you can build a lot of different verticals on top of. And when we talk about the internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It just so happens cross-border payments with institutions is the niche that we're focused on right now. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. So, so the goal would be to, for XRP to play a much larger role in, in the future. Exactly. So the big pain points that we have found are on cross-border payments uh -huh. today, but there are other applications that can be built on top of this as well. That's something that our team with Spring is doing today of investing in this ecosystem. So a lot of people, when they talk about you know, distributed ledger technology and, and, uh, and they, you know, they conflate it with, with blockchain, um, you know, they're talking about things that, that may be solvable just with a good API architecture, right? I mean, shouldn't we be thinking, shouldn't your first, uh, your most Im you know, important priority right now as an institution be kind of focused on your, on your APIs and, and how, you, how you digitize everything that you do? And it's only after you've kind of thought carefully about digitizing things that you would then, you know, move to this, this next layer of technology? I'd say the first thing you need to care about is the customer experience. There are many ways to provide a better customer experience, especially when you look at how poor the experience is today. So step one is understanding how the customer is interfacing with your products, and then from there, identify the gaps and then solve them. The first step in many of these cases is just API-enabled communications. And that's why one of the reasons of our pragmatic approach to RippleNet is creating this standardized API infrastructure between the various financial institutions. It's only once you get this instantaneous communication and information exchange that you can really move on to instantaneous value exchange. Yeah. Right? In many ways, what I think of RippleNet is doing is RippleNet is laying a, a highway over dirt roads so that digital assets like Ferraris can actually be driven successfully. So Craig, thanks for, uh, thanks for speaking with us today. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Huge supporter of Berkeley.